Hi, I'm Marilene Strauss and I'm your Miss South Africa for 2014. You are watching Joburg Today. In 2008, De Beers launched the Forever Mark brand, which applies an inscription to all of its diamonds, assuring consumers that the progress from mine to shop is completely ethical. Well, the Forever Mark brand is also about the naturalness and unique beauty of these diamonds. And to discuss further, I have with me Anna Russo, the brand manager of Forever Mark. Anna, when we're talking about Forever Mark, we are talking about a premium brand. But please elaborate for us on the assurance you're giving to consumers about this naturalness and beauty of these diamonds. Forever Mark diamonds um, come from only a few mines which produce very high quality gems. And they are very carefully selected. In fact, less than 1% of the world's diamonds qualify to be a Forever Mark and they are cut and polished by the best cutters and polishers who work in partnership with the beers. Now, these diamonds are also responsibly sourced, meaning it's not just that they don't come from areas of conflict, they're not blood diamonds, um, they truly benefit communities and the environment of the countries from which they originate. And Forever Mark diamonds are also graded beyond the four C's. At the Forever Mark Diamond Institute, each diamond before being graded and inscribed is um, actually inspected, very carefully inspected. And if there's any imperfection impacting on its beauty or compromising its natural and untreated quality, that diamond is actually excluded, put aside, not inscribed, not graded and not inscribed. That's very interesting. Tell me, Anna, judging from the market's uptake, that is the demand for Forever Mark diamonds, are consumers willing to pay a premium, not only for the diamond, but for the assurance that you're talking about? Yes, they are. Um, people are becoming less concerned with paying a premium for a branded diamond because they appreciate the reassurance of quality that comes with it. Each Forever Mark diamond has got an inscription and um, um, it's, a, it's an expensive nanotechnology by the beers and that inscription alone justifies a premium. And the inscription is proof of the promise of a promise that the beers is making to you that the diamond has met the requirements of beauty, rarity and responsibly sourcing and responsible sourcing and uh, it's being kept natural and untreated. Is it just the larger diamonds, the larger gems that are inscribed? What about the very small ones? The Beers has developed the inscription technology a little bit farther and we're now able to inscribe beginning with 0.10 of a carat. The smaller stones are not inscribed. Um, however, Forevermark um, has just launched a new project that's called Forevermark Petit and it's about branding the smaller diamonds. Um, stones uh, smaller than uh, 0.10 of a carat who come, who be sold under the umbrella of the brand and who come with the same promise of, of beauty and integrity as the, as the bigger stones. And I wonder how this technology impacts on the pricing of the diamonds as well as ultimately the sales of Forever Mark diamonds. People love the inscription, what it stands for, emotionally and in practical terms. People love the fact that the diamond uh, um, is inscribed, gets the inscription if it has passed the test, if it qualifies to become a forever mark. And um, um, people also um, love the fact that it brings uh, lots of peace of mind that the diamond cannot be swapped um, if they're taking their piece of jewelry to be cleaned or repaired. Um, because there's an individual number uh, which makes the, the inscription and that number um, will always trace the diamond back to its owner. So uh, the inscription is making Forever Mark diamonds uh, uh, easy to sell and the brand very successful. Anna, De Beers is very optimistic that demand for diamonds will remain buoyant going forward despite uh, global economic concerns. Yes. But are there any concerns on your side that consumers will be opting more for synthetics as opposed to the real thing? We are not concerned that synthetic diamonds um, will become more appealing. Um, if someone is unaware that they are purchasing a synthetic diamond, that's another story. I don't think that people regard synthetic diamonds as an alternative to real ones. And a synthetic product cannot compete with the real 
with the Rio Diamond, because it's all about the dream, the emotions and the meaning uh, of the Rio natural diamond. The market is definitely looking for uh, natural and rare, and actually people buy diamonds to celebrate the, the true moment, moments in their lives. Let's talk about Forever Mark's uh, jewellery designs and collections. Is it all about what's trending right now in the jewellery fashion capital of the world, which is Milan? Forever Mark is a design and innovation centre in Milan, where all the global signature Forever Mark collections have been created. We know that Milan is uh, one of the design capitals of the world and Italy has got an incredible reputation for jewellery design. So it is um, um, extremely valuable that Forever Mark is seeking inspiration in such an environment. I find that our customers love the global angle and um, they look for, yes, a unique diamond, but also for an exclusive design, a brand design, uh, which is available all over the world and um, it is recognizable as such as a, as a brand uh, design. Anna, you mentioned that Forevermark uses reputable diamond cutters and polishers. Currently in South Africa, there's an only an estimated of 300 uh, diamond polishers. Uh, how does De Beers contribute to the local supply of diamond polishers? De Beers is the largest supplier of rough diamonds to the South African cutting industry and um, is working to promote the transformation and the expansion of, uh, of the industry. And the South African cutting industry uh, is involved in cutting and polishing Forever Mark diamonds. Uh, so is receiving um, some of the best uh, De Beers uh, quality gems which go to the brand and uh, this helps uh, grow and sustain the local industry. Hi, this is DJ Zinte and you're watching Joburg Today. Beneficiation is the new buzzword in Africa as it is considered a game changer to the roadmap of a new economic reality. The aim is to boost manufacturing in downstream industries to create jobs while upskilling the local workforce. As discussed in that interview you just watched, there are currently only around 300 local diamond cutters and polishers in the country. While well, De Beers has committed to be part of the larger agenda of beneficiation and launched its enterprise development program in 2016 to contribute directly to the development and supply of local diamond cutters and polishers. The company selected five local entrepreneurs to embark on an exciting journey with them. The official launch took place in Johannesburg and towards the latter part of the year, participants made their way to Kimberley to view the finest diamonds and purchase them. Well, here is that story. The background of the project is that, uh, is that we felt at De Beers, we had to intervene in a space to grow diamond cutting and polishing in South Africa. Whilst diamond cutting and polishing has been in existence in South Africa for over 100 years, it has been in a decline in recent years. In particular, we want to look at the South African ownership of the diamond cutting and polishing industry in this country. So we introduced a program that would focus on young South African diamond cutters and polishers and be enabled, enable them to develop and grow and become competitive in the global international diamond markets. Here is Jo Matole of Kwame Diamonds taking her first step into the De Beers site room where she has the opportunity to access rough diamonds and buy them. The raw material access to rough diamonds is considered as a key barrier to growth. This has been a long time coming. I promise you right now I need to pinch myself. I still can't believe I'm sitting here with this view, with this box in front of me, with my sister experiencing this moment because to be honest with you, we started a long time ago. This, this journey has been, we started it, I mean, years, from trying to get a mine, trying to get side, to, trying to get, and ending up here with our own box. The first time I was here, I was here on a, I was an employee. Now I'm actually a business owner, my own box, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. It's, it's, it's too exciting. I'm so emotional. It's not funny. You know, I'm literally shaking. I was looking forward to it. You know, when you talk about it and you're telling people, we're getting a side, we're getting a side until you are here and you're actually touching these diamonds and they are yours. 
to buy. It's, it's an experience I can never explain. You, you need to experience it yourself. It's, it's, it's amazing. I have to pinch myself because I am so excited to be here today with Jo to share this moment with her following the South African trailblazer all the way from the city of gold to the city of diamonds. I'm also very excited to be here because this is the first time that De Beers has allowed anyone to come into a site room and to film the whole process of buying diamonds. Now the site room is where site holders, that is De Beers customers, come to see the diamonds they want to purchase and to buy them. And these are real diamonds in my hand. If you just look at these beauties rough from the earth, it's enough to inspire anyone to get involved in this business. Now what is so great about the De Beers Beneficiation Initiative is that they are reshaping this country. They are empowering South African cutters and polishers in diamonds. They are also reviving this industry and uplifting local communities. Look, um, the process started, to be honest, about three years ago, and it was just a trial and error, trial and error, and pretty much to try, uh, I guess the Beers wanted to find the right people for the project, because being in a diamond industry is not like any other business. It's, it's, you cannot put a blanket approach to it. You need people that are focused, you need people that are quite passionate about the business, you need people that will be in touch with the industry, you know, and uh, just pretty much demystifying the industry. Most of the time you see, not being controversial, but most of the time it's always been a wide dominated business. Now with us coming in, you know, sort of like integrates and um, it's hope for the business because right now we need a revival for the industry. And this is, this is a great start. This is absolutely amazing. Molefi Letsiki of Diamond Holdings also made his way from Johannesburg to Kimberley to cite his first set of De Beers diamonds. It's an exciting moment. Uh, I mean, you know, for me, it, it's, it's exciting and very emotional at the same time, you know, walking into this building that I never thought that one day one would get a chance to even walk into. You know, I've always known every time I came to Kimberley that that's the De Beers site holder building. And, and it's exciting to just walk in and walk in knowing that I'm a client that is coming to view stones, you know, especially coming from a background where my father used to be a polisher um, and, and f for a short while he ran his own company cutting and polishing diamonds. And that's where I, I, I got introduced to diamonds, you know, growing up, all I wanted to be was a traffic cop. And, <laughs> and it just dawned on me one day uh, when uh, growing up, my father would take me to work with him sometimes over weekends. And that's what introduced me to diamonds because it was amazing for me to see how something um, so beautiful and precious and brilliantly shining can come out of this carbon that, you know, people used to sit on benches and cut and polish, you know, and, and that really caught me. Ever since then, I guess I've just been starstruck by, by the diamonds and, and, and today just being here, it's, it's like a dream come true. De Beers maintains all five participants are developing well since the launch of this program and it all simply comes down to having a passion for the business. Nushina Mohammed for Joburg Today. And that brings us to the end of the show. Remember, we would love to hear from you. So like us on Facebook, joburgtoday.tv, and follow us on Twitter at joburgtoday. Also, for more coverage on the city, check out our playlist. And that's it from me, Nushina. Have a good one.